Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So I suppose most of you are following a few other vegan YouTubers here. And over the past few weeks or so, you may have seen a video or two or three from some of them expressing their concerns as vegans as to whether or not they are able to get the essential omega-3 fatty acids out of their vegan diet, considering that DHA is really only found in sea life, like say fish and fish oil supplements. So I'm not going to call anyone out here. I think they've raised some valid concerns and I'm going to take a look at this issue and tell you what I think is the truth about it. First, just the quickest review of what omega-3 fatty acids are. They come in two different forms. One is the short chain omega-3 called ALA and that's found in our vegan diet and leafy greens like veggies and spinach and also in nuts like walnuts, flaxseed and canola oil. And in addition to the short chain omega-3, there are two long chains, EPA and DHA. And all three of these omega-3 fatty acids are necessary for us to be healthy. And these two long chains, EPA and DHA, are found in oceanic and freshwater foods like algae and fish and shellfish. So here's the crux of the issue for these past vegan videos is that if you're eating a healthy vegan diet, you know, with leafy greens and walnuts, you're getting your ALA, your short chain omega-3s. The question is, are you able to get the long chain omega-3s? And the answer seems to be no, because those only come from fish and the like. Well, it's been known that people that eat no fish, no meat, ones that are just eating, you know, plants or leafy greens or their flax seeds or walnuts, get in their short chain omega-3s, have the ability to convert some of that into the long chain, but it's been thought that we really can't convert that much. Well, in 2010, a research team in the United Kingdom um, did a study on over 14,000 people, and it confirmed suspicions that the human body can indeed make much more EPA and DHA from our ALA and plant foods than ever thought before. In fact, the researchers found less differences than expected in the EPA DHA levels in people's blood, despite large differences in how much omega-3s they were intaking. For example, the difference in omega-3 intake between the fish eaters and the non-fish eaters was up to 80% more. However, when you compared the blood serum levels for omega-3 fatty acids, particularly the long chains, it was just a couple percentage points difference, pretty much the same results. So if you happen to be one of these vegans who's considering not being vegan anymore so they can get their long chain fatty acids. Well, this study shows you don't need to do that. You're getting a lot more than you might think. It seems like the body becomes more efficient at converting ALA into the long chain. At least that's what the researchers speculated. And I do realize that the vegans that were considering quitting their vegan ways to, to go non-vegan to get their long chain fatty acids had their health in mind, their long-term health. And that's completely understandable. But what you're really doing there is exchanging one problem, which I showed was not really a problem after all, for a whole another problem. We're talking about pollution of our ocean waters, the fish that live in them. Fish has the preformed DHA and EPA, but on the other hand, our oceans have become so polluted that fish may contain various pollutants, including dioxins, PCBs, pesticides like DDT, flame retardant chemicals, and heavy metals, including mercury, lead, and cadmium, that can negatively affect human health. Indeed, the Scripps Institution of Oceanography study finds that toxic pollutants are found in fish across all the world's oceans. Now, 2017, I don't understand why anyone is eating fish, if they truly want to be healthy. As the authors of the study indicated, persistent organic pollutants can be found in any species of fish anywhere in the world. In fact, comparing today's fish to the fish of what your parents ate at their age, we're getting about 50% more of these pollutants. I always like to say what Dr. Gregor of nutritionfacts.org has to say about any of these issues, because you know it's going to be a well-informed, well-researched position. Anyway, he points out some stuff I hadn't been thinking of, like how our brain sizes decrease as we age. Between ages 16 and 80, our brain loses about 1% of its volume every two to three years, such that by the time we're in our 70s, our brain has lost 26% of its size and ends up smaller than that of two to three-year-old children. As we age, our ability to make the long-chain omega-3s like DHA from the short-chain omega-3s in plant foods such as flax seeds, chia seeds, walnuts, and greens may decline. And so that's why I recommend 
Everyone needed a plant-based diet, along with contaminant-free EPA and DHA, to get the best of both worlds, omega-3 levels associated with brain preservation while minimizing exposure to toxic pollutants. The studies that Dr. Greger was looking at in this video of his, they were looking at the brain health of people over the age of 50. You know, that's when you have to start worrying about your, your brain's shrinkage over time. And yeah, might not be a bad idea to supplement with, a, as he said, a non-contaminated, non sea fish version of, of omega-3s, such as he's recommending an algae or yeast-based form of those fatty acid supplements. So if you really want to be safe, I would go with Dr. Greger's advice and supplement. However, back to these um, younger YouTubers that were concerned, they seem to be young, healthy people in their 20s, probably not as much of a concern as far as a need to supplement. But I thought I'd put this information out here so you can make an informed decision if you want to take a supplement or not. And lastly, there's the issue of our ratio of intaking omega-6s to omega-3s. None of these studies that I covered here talked about that. And I know it's really important because way too many Americans, and a lot of vegans too, are getting way too many omega-6s compared to their omega-3s. They got to get that omega-3 ratio much higher. So that's a topic of another video. I'm going to come back to that. Anyway, I hope you got some out of this video. Let me know by hitting like, and let me know down there what you thought about the original videos as I was referring to about, you know, should I quit being vegan because I'm not getting enough omega-3s? And let me know if this was answered satisfactorily to you here. I think the science is pretty clear that probably don't have to worry about it, but if you really do, take a non-contaminated supplement as Dr. Greger recommends. In fact, I'm getting to that age point now. I'm going to start looking into it just to be safe. Anyway, yeah, let me know what you're going to do. Let me know your thoughts down there. Share this with a friend who's convinced they need to quit being a vegan so they can get their long chain fatty acids. And subscribe for more from me and Angie here at Happy Healthy Vegan. So until next time, keep it card, man. Get those omega fatty acids. Keep it card. Spinning till I'm dizzy